As we've mentioned, the H90 offers two global routing modes, insert or dual mode. Insert mode gives us the ability to run two algorithms in series or parallel with up to two mono insert loops or one stereo loop. Dual mode, on the other hand, allows us to work with two independent signal paths at once. Put another way, we can process two mono or stereo instruments at once. But unlike insert mode, in dual mode, we cannot use any insert loops. To change the global routing mode, enter system settings by simultaneously pressing and holding the programs and routing buttons for a few seconds. Using the select knob, highlight global and press the knob to enter. The second option on the first page of this menu is titled routing. Turn the second quick knob to switch between insert and dual mode. When changing from one to the other, the H90 will prompt us to confirm rear connections before proceeding and mute the audio. We have the option to cancel to return to the system menu or confirm to proceed. Our choice here determines what we see when we press the front panel routing menu button. When the H90's global routing mode is set to dual mode, we can work with two independent signal paths at once. This makes it possible to use the H90 as an effects processor for two separate instruments, as an outboard effects processor for two auxiliary channels of a live console, an outboard effects processor on two stereo sends of a DAW, or for using the four cable method in a guitar rig. Note that when we change our routing to dual mode, an alternate playlist and set of available factory and user lists will be enabled. To put it simply, Programs and lists we create to be used with insert mode cannot be used in dual mode and vice versa. The routing menu in dual mode shows us two independent signal path diagrams from left to right. The icons inside of rectangles represent each algorithm of the program. By turning the first quick knob, we can position the algorithms in five different positions. We can have both algorithms in series on path one, both algorithms in parallel on path one, an algorithm on each path, both in parallel on path two, or both in series on path two. Just like in insert mode, these are the same icons found on the top right of the select mode screen, where we can see the names of the algorithms. The difference is that dual mode is denoted by two horizontal parallel lines between icons. An easy way to remember it is, these parallel lines look like what we see in the routing menu. Something to note. Unlike insert mode where we have an arrow for series or vertical lines for parallel routing, the only place where we can check the actual routing of algorithms in dual mode is in the signal flow diagram of the routing menu. We begin this section with a few examples of where dual mode would be useful. There are two independent paths. Path 1 flows from INS 1 and 2 to OUTS 1 and 2, and Path 2 flows from INS 3 and 4 to OUTS 3 and 4. Each path can function in mono using input and output 1 for Path 1 and input and output 3 for Path 2. They can also function in stereo using inputs and outputs 1 and 2 for Path 1 and inputs and outputs 3 and 4 for Path 2. They can also function in mono in, stereo out, or stereo in, mono out. When outputting in mono, use output 1 for path 1 and output 3 for path 2. In dual mode, H90 is configured to receive mono signals on input 1 for path 1 and input 3 for path 2. Connecting mono signals to input 2 or input 4 only will yield undesired results. The H90 does not function as a 4-in, four 4-out four mono device. Let's explain these connections with an example. Let's say we want to connect a guitar and a keyboard to the H90. We can connect the guitar to path 1, which flows from in 1 to out 1. If we were to connect the keyboard to H90 in mono, we could use path 2, which flows from in 3 to out 3. Each path would get its own effects algorithm. It's also possible to run each path mono in and stereo out. In this example, we can achieve that by adding a cable from out 2 to another guitar amp, and from out 4 to the PA. 
The H90 takes care of automatically adjusting the algorithms for stereo output. The next thing to keep in mind is that we're matching the operating level of the devices we're connecting to H90. This means that Path 1's I.O. should be set for instrument level because we're working with a guitar signal, and Path 2 should be set for line level because we're working with a keyboard. To use a microphone with the H90, Eventide recommends connecting to a mic preamp first to control the gain going into the H90. This goes for vocal mics as well as mics used for close miking instruments like woodwinds or brass. Eventide's mixing link is a great solution for musicians that not only need a preamp, but it also has an input for instrument level signals as well. In this example, I'll connect a mic to Mixing Link's mic input, which provides 65 dBs of gain and phantom power for condenser microphones. We can send that mic signal to any effects processor using the onboard effects loop. In this case, connect Mixing Link's 2FX output to H90's in 1. Connect H90's out 1 to Mixing Link's from effects. On path 1, we can dedicate an algorithm or two to the microphone signal. If we prefer, we can connect any instrument level signal, like an acoustic electric guitar or piezo pickups, to the instrument in of the mixing link. Use the 20 dB pad if necessary. Then we can send that signal to the same loop connected to the H90. On the pedal, we can design different programs for different instruments or songs. There are many benefits to using the mixing link in this manner. First, since the H90 in dual mode does not provide inserts because all available I.O. are being used to connect two distinct signal paths, the mixing link allows us to incorporate other effects in its effects loop before or after the H90's effect path externally. Secondly, the mixing link can direct signal to two different places. From the 2-amp output, we can connect to a personal monitor or amp and have a dedicated volume control. From the DI Line XLR connector, we can take it straight to the PA without being affected by the amp level volume. Lastly, Mixing Link has three onboard options for mixing the effects loop with the dry signal for optimal results. We still have Path 2 available for another instrument. How about some guitar with our vocal? Early on, we connected the H90 to the front of a guitar amp. This gives us the ability to run two effects at once in series or parallel, plus add inserts at any point before, in between, or after the H90's effects. However, this requires us to run the amplifier fairly clean. If we prefer to get overdrive and distortion from the amplifier's preamp section, putting all our effects in the front of the chain might not make sense. It's good practice to place time-based effects like delay and reverb in the effects loop following an amp's preamp section. In insert mode, the most basic way to connect the H90 to an amp's effects loop is connecting a cable from the amp's effects send to H90's in one. From out one, connect to the amp's effects return. For most amplifiers, it'll be necessary to change the operating level of in one and out one to line level. In the system menu, under I.O., set in one and two to line. With this setup, we can use two effects at once in series or parallel and take advantage of inserts as well. The disadvantage is that all the H90 effects appear after the preamp section. So if we have a desire to use eventide algorithms going into the front of the amp, we won't be able to do it with this configuration. Running effects using pre-post routing, also known as the four cable method, gives us the ability to place effects before or after an amp's preamp stage. The H90 makes it possible to have programs that give us two effects going into the amp with nothing in the effects loop, or one in front and another in the loop, or nothing in front and two in the loop. As we've learned up to this point, the H90 has two global routing modes, insert and dual mode. Connecting to an amp's effects loop in pre-post can be achieved with both, but each has advantages and disadvantages. Using insert routing, Connecting to an amp in pre-post is possible using one of the inserts. Connect the guitar to in one of the H90. From out three, connect to the front of the amp. From the amp's effects send, connect to in three on the H90. From out one of the H90, connect to the amp's effects return. 
In this example, the aim is to have one effect in front and another in the loop. The signal goes into the pedal and then into the first algorithm. Then, it travels out of the insert send to the front of the amp through its preamp section. After the preamp section, the signal travels back to the H90 via the insert return and through the second algorithm. Finally, the pedal's output gets returned to the amp through the effects return to be heard through the speaker. Because we are using an insert on H90 to route signal to the amp, we can position algorithms anywhere in the signal chain. Think of insert 1 as the amp's preamp section. Now, we can have two algorithms in front on one program or two algorithms in the effects loop on another program, or one in front and one in the back. We can even introduce another outboard effect anywhere in the chain with the second H90 insert. The downside to using the global insert routing mode for pre-post is, if we bypass the insert providing the connection to the front of the amp, or for any reason it gets disconnected, we may lose the signal completely. Similarly, if we employ the second insert and the external effect goes down or gets disconnected, we can also lose the signal. It makes things more challenging to troubleshoot. For this reason, it may be best to use the global dual routing mode for pre-post four cable method connections. To connect to a guitar rig in pre-post using the global dual routing mode, connect the guitar to in one. From out one of the H90, go to the front of the amp. From the amp's effect send, connect to H90's in 3. From out 3, connect back to the amp's effects return. As we can see, path 1 is for algorithms going to the front of the amp, while path 2 is for algorithms placed in the effects loop. It's way easier to envision the H90 as two separate effects pedals, especially when incorporating it into a more complex setup with other pedals. The drawback to pre-post connections with dual routing mode is that we no longer have the flexibility of using inserts. But if we go back to the analogy of using the H90 like two separate guitar pedals, this doesn't matter so much, as we can just place pedals before or after each path. It's important to note in this setup that path one, or in one and out one, should be set to instrument level in the system menu. Path two, the one connected to the effects loop via in three and out three, should be set to line level for most amps. To expand on this idea, if we're using a MIDI loop switcher, running the H90 in dual routing mode allows us to assign each path to its own loop. The more powerful loop switchers on the market even allow us to put loops in any order we want, and some even in parallel with other loops. And since we can have two algorithms on any path at any given time, this gives us tremendous flexibility to place Eventide's powerful effects anywhere in our signal chain. The H90 makes it easy to build wet dry rigs, where we have a dedicated amp for the dry signal and another amp dedicated to wet effects. It's crucial that the wet effects have kill dry set to on, as the wet amp should not be sent any dry signal. We can take it a step further by adding one more amp to the wet effects section for true stereo in a wet dry wet setup. Traditionally, these setups require a splitter to take the post dry effects signal and send it to both the dry amp and wet effects chain. Using H90's insert architecture and internal parallel splitting, we have the tools necessary to achieve such configurations with the added benefit of repositioning effects in the signal chain on a program basis. To set up a wet dry rig using the H90, we'll place an insert first in the chain as our splitter. Connect the guitar to input one of the H90. Connect out three to the dry amp input. Connect out one to the input of the amp for wet effects. In this setup, the insert will serve as the way we take the guitar signal and split it to the dry and wet amps. For this to work properly, the insert mix parameter found in the routing menu must be set to 0%. Only then will the insert behave like a splitter. Now we can place our dry effects before the H90 and use both algorithms after the insert for our wet effects chain. Having said that, in true wet-dry or wet-dry-wet rigs, it's not advised to put wet effects in series with each other. Just imagine the result we'd get from putting a fully wet delay into a fully wet reverb. If this is the vibe we're after, we can program the P button in perform mode to mute the insert output to the dry amp. 
we'll be able to achieve extra wet beds of sound without dry signal. This configuration, nonetheless, results in effects too dense for most applications. To solve this, some users might have the first effects kill dry set to off and the second effects set to on, just to preserve some of the dry signal through the first effect. It's common to do this for certain combinations of effects like putting modulation in series with a delay or a delay in series with a reverb. Nonetheless, because dry signal is present in the wet section, this configuration is not a true wet-dry setup. To provide the best clarity and stereo image, traditional wet-dry wet setups run the wet effects in parallel. To make this possible, such rigs incorporate a parallel mixer that feeds a mono signal to each stereo pedal and returns only the wet signal from each. The signals get mixed and the left output of the mixer goes to the left amp and the right output goes to the right amp. This way, a delay and reverb ring out independently, instead of having each tap of a delay getting reverb on it, like in a series configuration. For players that have amps with an effects loop, it's common to bypass the wet amps preamp section altogether by simply connecting the outputs of the mixer to the effects return of each amp. Because there's usually no way of controlling the volume of an amp's power section independently, another option is using a dedicated outboard power amp with volume control that's connected to cabinets. Others go directly to front of house and have the engineer mix the wet effects for the audience. Either option usually renders wet effects with even more definition, so experiment to see what works best. The H90 makes it easy for us to emulate parallel paths by simply putting the post splitter wet effects in parallel. To show how this is done, let's go back to our previous wet dry example and simply change the routing to parallel. For this to work properly, make sure all the effects in the wet chain are set to kill dry on. Here, the H90 acts as our parallel mixer. In fact, we can use a second insert to use a mono effect in parallel with other stereo effects if we wish. We just have to realize this effect will run in mono. Also, make sure this outboard effect can run in kill dry or 100% wet. Then we can use out one to a single amp for wet dry or add out two to another amp for wet dry wet. Another parallel mixing option is to use an external analog splitter before the H90 to split signal to our dry amp and then the pedal. We can use the H90 as a three-way stereo wet effect parallel mixer by employing the stereo insert. In advanced wet dry wet rigs, each wet effect has its own volume control. Similarly, on the H90, we can use the extensive expression mapping to control wet effect levels and create custom multi-parameter ranges of control for things like effect depths and or feedback levels. In wet dry rigs where we prefer to use the dry amps preamp section for its tone, we can connect the guitar to the dry amps input. From the amps effect send, we connect it in one of the H90. From out three, we connect back to the amps effects return. Once again, we can use insert one as a splitter as long as its insert mix is set to zero. The advantage here is we get to use the preamp section to shape our tone and pass it on to the wet effects chain. This sounds better in cases where the wet effects chain is not going to the front of an amp, but rather directly to a power amp that does not have any tone shaping capabilities. We began this section discussing the advantage the H90 has with its configurability on a program basis. For example, on one program, we could use preset A as a dry effect in front, like a wah-wah, EQ, compressor, overdrive, distortion, or pitch effect. We just have to understand that this signal will be split to both the dry amp and the wet effects chain. We can then use preset B as a time-based effect with kill dry on for our wet effects. On another program, we can get creative by splitting our clean sound on a parallel path. One side could be processed with an overdrive on preset A, directing it to the dry amp, while we send another clean path to a delay on preset B headed for the wet amp. By setting insert one's mix to 100%, we make sure the overdriven signal does not get mixed with the clean delay path. The main point is, we can use H90's routing to come up with all sorts of unique blends and interesting combinations. Earlier, we learned how to use the H90 in dual mode to process two instruments at once. 
However, this required us to direct the signal of each independent path to its own set of outputs. But what if we would like to process two instruments at once through the same effects? Using insert routing mode, it's possible to make the H90 function like a mixer. To explain how this works, I'll use two stereo synths. Beginning with the default series routing, create a stereo insert and place it first in the chain. Connect one instrument to ins 1 and 2. Connect the other to the inputs of the insert on ins 3 and 4. Set the insert's mix parameter to 50%. This way, the H90 will mix both signals equally. Otherwise, if insert mix is set to 100%, the signal chain would be broken since there's nothing coming from outs 3 and 4. Lastly, connect outs 1 and 2 to your stereo monitoring system. In this configuration, both instruments get processed by preset A and B in series. If we wish, we can position our presets in parallel as well. Here, if we move the stereo insert to the front of one preset, Synth 1 will go through both presets in parallel, while Synth 2 will only be processed by a single preset. By setting the insert mix parameter to 100%, it's possible to process each instrument with its own algorithm. Doing so will cut off the split signal from the first synth and only direct it to preset A. The second synth will only go through preset B. The output of both will be mixed. If we now place the stereo insert between presets and set the mix to 50%, we can process synth 1 through presets A and B in series, and synth 2 through preset B only. Finally, placing the stereo insert at the end of the chain prevents synth 2 from being processed at all, while we can use serial or parallel processing for synth 1. Not only are these options useful for multi-instrument rigs, but the H90 can serve to mix more than one musician. To demonstrate this, let's go back to the one preset per instrument example. Switch the stereo insert for a mono insert, and now we'll be able to connect an instrument to input one and a second instrument to input three. Set the insert mix to 100%. Connect out one to an amp. Now, two musicians can play through the same amp, but have their own effect. The H90 takes care of mixing the signals for us. We can take things a step further by adding one more musician. Open up Insert 2 and place it in parallel with preset A and B. Connect that instrument to Input 4, which is the input of that insert. Set the Insert 2 mix to 100%, so we don't get any signal from the first instrument. In this configuration, the first instrument gets processed through preset A, the second instrument gets processed through preset B, and the third instrument simply gets mixed with the other two signals and sent to the same output. We can even use outs 1 and 2 to take the signal to a PA instead. Keep in mind it's important to set the appropriate operating levels for these inputs. In this example, we want to make sure ins 1 and 3 are set to instrument level for guitars, and IN 4 is set to line level for keys. The outputs should be set to instrument for guitar amps or line level for PAs. Dual mode on the H90 allows live sound engineers to use the pedal as two independent mono or stereo effects processors. If the console has two auxiliary sends, connect one aux send to IN 1 on the H90. From H90's OUT 1, connect to the aux return or an available channel on the mixer dedicated to effects. Do the same for the second aux send using IO3 on the H90. In the routing menu, place an algorithm on each path. It's also possible to send a signal from a console effects send in mono, but return a stereo signal from the H90 by simply connecting outputs 1 and 2 and or 3 and 4 and directing it back to the console on two channels if it doesn't have a stereo aux return. Here's a tip. In this configuration, it's best practice to run the H90 in kill dry mode. Enter system settings by pressing and holding the programs and routing buttons until we see the system menu. With select, highlight global and push to enter. Scroll to the second page of settings. The third option on this page is kill dry. Use the third quick knob to turn on global kill dry. This way, we can send signal to either path of the H90 from the console's corresponding aux send, and the dry signal from the console 
won't ever interfere with dry signal inside the H90 that may be delayed ever so slightly. It's common for this to result in comb filtering. This way, the wet signal from the H90 can be controlled on the return bus or return channels and mixed to taste. If we have an audio interface with at least two available inputs and outputs, we can use the H90 in insert routing mode as an external dual algorithm stereo effects processor. Algorithms can be run in series or parallel configurations. With computer-based AMP modeling technology, it's possible to use the H90 as a front-end effects processor by connecting the guitar to the H90 on input 1. Take output 1 and connect it to an available channel on your audio interface. Or take outs 1 and 2 to two inputs for stereo effects if the software can handle stereo inputs. For best results, connect the H90 to high impedance or high Z inputs of an audio interface. This will ensure optimal levels whenever the H90's bypass mode is set to relay or DSP bypass mode. Otherwise, if the bypass mode is set to relay, connecting the H90 to line level inputs will cause a signal disparity when the H90 is bypassed. This is because an interface's line level input will be sensing the load of the guitar, not the H90, due to the signal flow being true bypass. This in turn leads to a noticeable decrease in input level. If the interface does not have high Z inputs, there are two solutions. Number one, use the H90 in DSP bypass mode, which automatically optimizes the output signal for inputs with mismatched impedances. Or number two, connect the H90's outputs to a direct box or two, and connect those outputs to mic inputs of the interface. The key objective is to achieve level parity when the H90 is either active or bypassed. Once those connections have been made, open your favorite standalone amp modeling software and select the inputs where the H90 is connected as your input source. This emulates connecting the H90 directly to an amp or stereo amps if the software can handle it. If you're working with a DAW, open up a mono or stereo track and set the input channel to the ones that correspond to where the H90 is connected. Put the AMP model on the insert and make sure the DAW is set up to monitor that input. In Pro Tools, for example, it's necessary to turn off low latency monitoring mode in the options menu to hear the signal going through the model. Otherwise, we'll only be able to hear the effects of the AMP model after we've recorded the raw signal from the H90. If we switch the global routing to dual mode, the H90 can act as two independent stereo effects processors, one on each path. This requires the use of an audio interface with at least four in and four outputs. Take any available stereo output to H90's in one and two. From H90's out one and two, connect it to an available stereo input pair. This is path one. Take another stereo output pair from the audio interface and connect it to ins 3 and 4 on the H90. Take the pedals out 3 and 4 back to another available input pair on the interface. This is path 2. On the pedal, assign an algorithm to each path, or we can design programs with up to two algorithms for any active path. Lastly, for this setup, we recommend setting the I.O. on the interface to minus 10 dB and H90 to line level operation for best results. It's important to understand that when monitoring external digital effects, it's always best practice to calculate the system's round-trip latency from the outs of the interface, through the processor in DSP bypass mode, and back into Pro Tools. For this to work, make sure delay compensation is checked in the Options menu. Begin the process by recording a click track. We can use Pro Tools' click instrument and bus that signal over to another track. Here, I'm using bus 1 and 2. We record enable this track and print the click. Then, we'll record that printed click through the H90 on another track. Mute the click instrument and open another new track. We'll be busing the signal from the printed click to this new track on bus 3 and 4. Afterwards, Open inserts 5 and 6 on the printed click track 
to run signal through the H90 with the program bypassed. Record enable the newest track and print the result. We can then measure the latency in samples between the two waveforms and divide that figure by our sample rate. In this case, there's 728 samples of latency in my system. I'll divide that by 48 for 48,000 Hz and get 15.17 milliseconds of delay. With this calculation, we can apply that offset to the hardware insert where we have the H90 connected. Overall, latency depends on your computing system, interface, and buffer settings, so make sure these stay consistent from project to project. With delay compensation enabled, we can then place the insert directly on the track we want to process with kill dry off, so that we can hear the dry signal along with the effect. Any effects from inherent latency in my system will have been corrected with our delay compensation calculations and render an aligned signal. Or, if we prefer to monitor the outboard effects fully wet, bus signal from the original track to the inputs of an auxiliary track. Place the H90 insert at the top and make sure the H90 is set to kill dry on. Setting the H90 to kill dry makes sure the effect return is fully wet and eliminates any type of comb filtering that may yet occur. Just remember, if we change our sample rate, we'll need to conduct this process again. We hope you've enjoyed this comprehensive H90 tutorial. If there's a topic you think we should cover or you think needs further clarification, let us know in the comments. Remember, all topics can be accessed directly using the chapter links in the description. I invite you to like and subscribe to receive updates on future Eventide videos. Take care.